All right, how's it going, Reject Nation, Patron Ejects, depending on where you're watching this. Great. I'm John Humphrey of The Real Rejects, and uh, hey, Greg's in Colorado, but you know what, the show must go on. Wanted to discuss some movie news, so I thought who better to bring on than my man Kyle from hey, the FanTheoryChannel.com. Right? I didn't, I didn't screw it up you, this time? You got it right, man. All right. Yeah, so we're just going to talk about a few of the, the top news stories of the week. Yeah. Um, there are going to be more of these over on Patreon, but you know how it goes. So the first story we're going to talk about today, Obi-Wan Kenobi standalone film is finally in the works, Kyle. I think this is great, and I think it makes perfect sense. Do you? Yeah. Okay, they say that talks are in the, quote, earliest stages. There's no script, but they are looking at uh, Stephen Daldry to direct this. The, uh... The mastermind behind such films is Billy Elliot and The Hours. So get ready for a, a gripping Obi-Wan Kenobi drama. I actually think that's a very good choice, yeah. Yeah, that's actually, I'm, I'm, in, I'm intrigued by that. As much as I'm ribbing right now, I'm intrigued by that choice. Um, they've also, there's speculation about whether or not Ewan McGregor will return. They've already used his voice in uh, uh, The Force Awakens and whatnot. And he's been quoted as saying that he'd very much like to do it. He said, I'd very much like to do one too. I think the story between episode three and four... Uh, I think there's a story there. Um, anything else about this? Yeah, and this is a, one of a number of rumored, uh, you know, solo movies they're they're talking about making. They're working on Han Solo right now. There's also whispers of a Yoda and a Boba Fett movie, but, well, but Obi Wan. And, and I think I think that is why they're diving into the world of Obi Wan now because I think they weren't sure how to address it initially, so they kept putting it off. But I think because of what happened with the Han Solo production, mm -hmm. I think <laughs> they're, they, they really wanted to release a new Star Wars film every year, and now they're not going to. That's okay with me. That's that's okay with me, I like too. to miss stuff for a minute. <laughs> I like to be like, ah, oh, that thing I love, yeah. I don't want to just expect that it'll be here in a year, because like, it's not as special. You want, you want your heart to grow fondly. Exactly, man. Yes. I, I don't know. All my favorite bands take like four years to make a record yeah, instead yeah. of two. There's, you know, nothing, like... <laughs> there's nothing wrong with mixing it up and not having the same thing every single year. Yeah. You take your time. Take, yeah, your, time. take your time. Or, or the thing is, uh, you know, I don't know how these spinoffs are going to shape up. I did like Rogue One a lot, which isn't about a specific character, oh. but it is about a very important event. A very important event, yeah. And I like the way they changed the tone of that movie quite Absolutely. a bit. You know, mm -hmm. I love the war movie angle, and hearing that they're looking at Steven Dahl for this does make me interested because well he's more character based exactly which is really what we need more yeah. than this is star wars <laughs> i mean yeah. this is yeah. this it can't just be you know this can't if this isn't a michael bay production yeah you know <laughs> oh michael, michael bay Bay's does star, star wars the problem is <laughs> i feel like there is an alternate universe somewhere where that's a thing and i kind of i don't want to see it for real but like i wish i could dream it like a train wreck kind of thing you just can't you kind of wish you could see it and then yeah. you're like why did i see it like when they leaked that <laughs> fake uh michael bay batman script <laughs> the like the first five pages of michael bay's batman it's, it's hilarious and I would love to see a Star Wars version of that. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not the world's biggest Star Wars fan, but uh, in terms of their solo spin-off movies, you know, I'm not really excited about the prospect of a Yoda movie, to be honest no, with you. No, no, not at all. I think a Han Solo movie could be cool, but I think it's a tall order because, again, this is a big thing for me. I know I harp on this a lot, but I feel like certain characters are tied to the actor who played them. You know, it's like the remake of... I, I always harp on Point Break, but if you well, look at the remake of Point Break... Nobody seemed to care that much because the heart and soul of that movie is also Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze and Laurie Petty and, like, those people, you know? Um, Obi-Wan, like, Alec Guinness uh, is, you know, legendary. Like, that's, that's definitive. However, Ewan McGregor was able to step into those shoes, and so I don't feel like this is impossible. Yeah. You know, and I feel like Obi Wan is actually a character that could be interesting to explore. And I think he goes off. You know, I, I think yeah, I think that Obi or Obi Wan. I think that Star Wars is one of those few franchises where it is important to have. I mean, it should always have good character. But I'm just saying, in terms of what the franchise is, Star Wars really kind of varies between those two of character driven and blockbuster. Yeah. yeah. And so because of that, it, I, that's why I'm so excited about the director that they've chosen. And that's exactly why I don't understand why Yoda is even something that they're considering doing. Cause it's just, 
That's not... There's nothing... Why? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm like, I get what they're doing. I get that they want to... Exp I, I, I don't think that what they're... I don't think their idea is a bad one to start doing these spinoffs and exploring I would characters. be okay with a Yoda storyline that existed in like an animated movie or something sure. like that because sure. it's already an animated character. You, yeah. This isn't live I don't know action. if I want to see Yoda Origins the movie. No. Like, you know? No. Um, but, you know, like, Boba Fett sounds... Cause it's like, I feel like I, yeah. I'm most satisfied with the idea of taking side characters or, or smaller characters. Characters that are less iconic and less, you know, central. Because we've gotten to know those characters pretty well, I feel like. Uh, Obi-Wan, I, I think there is some stuff you can do with that. I think there's some areas you can explore. Yeah. And uh, I, if they really let Stephen Daldry bring his set of skills to that, I think it could be another sophisticated entry into the movie. Because especially if they want... Into the series. Because if they want to do one a year, they've got to be different. Like, I feel like that's what we've learned from the superhero boom, is it helps you to be uh, stylistically broad. <laughs> you know? I agree. 100%. Yeah. Uh, and Obi-Wan, I mean, there's so much story there to begin with. So I think they could tell what brought him to the apprentice position in the prequels. Like, Prior to that, they could tell that story and tell it good if they have Stephen Daldry behind it. Are you excited? I mean, would you want Ewan McGregor to, to jump back in? Um, I mean, yeah, yes and no. Okay. It really depends. Tom Holland. <laughs> You'd be great, Obi Wan. Perfect. I would. I would cast him as everything. <laughs> yeah, cast him as everything. He's like the new it guy. That's you. Um, I. I mean, yeah. I, I think. It would be okay to have Ewan McGregor as long as it didn't feel like we're doing the prequels. <laughs> as long as it's <laughs> more in the vein of what The Force Awakens was or yeah. especially what Rogue One was. Yeah, Like, yeah. if we kind of get that kind of feel for a movie, then, yeah, I don't care really who plays Ewan, or Ewan McGregor, who <laughs> plays Obi-Wan because it's it's probably going to be a good film. Yeah. And that's really what matters. So, yeah, I'm not opposed to Un McGregor. I just, it really depends on how it's being delivered. He is in an interesting position. <laughs> because they have at least a little bit embraced him, even though he is prominently a part of most people's least favorite things about this show. Sure, but he is also, he's a He's one of the better terrific, parts of those movies. Yeah, he's a pretty terrific actor. And, yeah, and, and, I, and as an Obi-Wan Kenobi, I think he's a good choice. You know, or it was like back then. He that was. was one of the things that worked for me in the prequels, anyway. Even if I didn't love how all that transpired, I still liked his. And he's got a youthful general. face that doesn't seem to age much. So. Ever. <laughs> it's weird. So he could do it. He could do it. Yeah. All right. All right. Here's some good news. Patty Jenkins is in final talks to land a historic directing deal for Wonder Woman two. Yes, this is going to be fantastic. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, why not continue with the same person who won you over in the first place? Yeah. Yeah, no, she's, um, yeah, I don't know. If... <laughs> Nobody knows exactly what, what the deal is, but according to Deadline, the quote says this, uh, typically, according to sources, a frosh director on a comp... Wow, it's been a long time since I've heard a... Like a... A frosh. Shorthand for freshman. That was like a whole... That was like a whole epithet in, in high school. It's crazy. Uh, a Frost director on a comic book movie gets $1.5 million to $3 million, while a director in the realm of Zack Snyder, who's helming DC's Justice League, received $10 million against 10% cash break, even for his second DC film, Man of Steel. That's usually paid out as 20% during pre-production, 60% during production, blah, 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 blah. Film numbers. Yes. So apparently, Patty Jenkins is just about confirmed. That's exciting. Now, I mean, I, I hope she gets paid. A tremendous amount for, for bringing <laughs> some good will to their entire operation. <laughs> like, I feel like you should give her all the money Agreed. right now. Agreed. Uh, I feel like Zach's, I mean, again, circumstances aside, I feel like dudes like Zack Snyder should maybe work a little harder for those paychecks. <laughs> maybe focus up a little harder. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely excited to hear that she's coming back, man. Yeah, and I think I think this is the perfect time for for us to really talk about gender equality uh, because it's not. Um, 
what are you talking about, Kyle? <laughs> we we live in a post everything society where nobody is offended and everyone is racist. Now is the time. Now is the time for something good to happen for a female director, and I think uh, I think it would be silly not to give this to her. I mean, it's all but oh, confirmed, dude, yeah, so. that would be ridiculous if they were like, <laughs> no, nah, I think we want to change course. <laughs> If they did that, I would be like, I, I, I'm not going to watch you guys' movies anymore. <laughs> like, I don't think you care that much about writing the chorus anymore. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely happy, not only just for her because the movie was good, but, yeah, I mean, like, it's about time that, like, this shouldn't be news, but it's it's about time. Like, it's, I'm glad to see that she's going to be able to carry it over, and I'm excited to see where they take the series from here because it seems like she brought a lot to the film, and it seems like... Uh, she helps to represent the best outcomes of, of DC's more creator-driven approach. Because the thing is, like, the DCEU started out with this idea of we want, we don't want the committee so much, we want it to be our creatives who guide it. And that's not been the vibe <laughs> for a lot of these, but, but, you know, Wonder Woman, I definitely felt that. And the things that she said she wanted to accomplish definitely shone through. And it would be interesting if, uh, you know, if, if she actually takes whatever happens in the Justice League and builds off of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just because... I, I'm not sure if she's just going to make it more, like, storyline separate from that, but, I mean, at this point, she's kind of... Someone have to make it in the world where this has happened to her already. Like, mm -hmm. Diana, Diana Price, this, or Prince, this has already happened to her. So we're going to build off of that. And I think that would be interesting to take what we've gotten from the original Wonder Woman film and and still, like, connect it to the Justice League because it's yeah. going to have to. Um, I, I think it's... It, I love mashing together things to see what something original you can create from that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why this is... It would be perfect for her to be the director for many reasons beyond the obvious. Well, yeah, and as the crossover, you know... All these movies now have bigger universes at hand. There are a lot of crossovers. And people, you know, at least judging by the Marvel movies because they're deeper into their operation, sure. you know, they've overcome, at least for me as a viewer, a lot of awkwardness and have started to make their crossover stuff more natural. And Justice League actually was happening before Wonder Woman originally. I mean, or at least they were working on it originally. So, like, okay. the story is still probably going to feel pseudo-disconnected from Wonder Woman. Yeah. Whereas Wonder Woman 2, it's not going to be that way. Yeah, well, and, and and Wonder Woman does benefit, I think, from being most mostly a period piece, you know. Yeah, because it's you can Captain. Well, America, and it should you know? be it should be separated for that reason alone. Too. Well, and and the thing is now this just makes me wonder what the vibe is going to be on the second movie because I I feel like we'll probably be present day. That's the vibe I got yeah. from the bookends of the movie, and uh -huh. I don't like just just me as a fan. I kind of wish we could stay. Period. You know, we could. I mean, it doesn't even have to be, you know, World War Two. It can be yes. somewhere else in the past, maybe during the Cold War or something like that. Um, but you know, I, that I'm, would be great, actually. That yeah. would be great. Like, you still make it take place, of course, after Wonder Woman, but it could be leading up to still more leading up to where that that goes. Yeah, I would be okay with that. I think going going in like yeah, just more stuff. more of a but a slightly different period, of course. Yeah, there's yeah, plenty of staying. time to work within that so yeah. yeah well and it's also it's gonna have to dot like i feel like if they go modern i don't know what the story would be yet but i i uh, you know everybody the vibe is everybody's going to reference winter soldier you know the the jump from first avenger to winter soldier uh -huh. and, I was uh, thinking that. Yeah. and the thing is like i know a lot of people don't love the first avenger but i like that movie quite a bit in, in terms of the marvel stuff and Part of it is because I just loved the period piece yeah. elements of it. You know, I, I liked spending time. Like, I think superheroes are really cool in that context. And, you know, that's where so many of them came from, is comic strips from that time. And so, yeah. you know, I feel that being honored, you know, in a movie like Wonder Woman. And so, you know, uh, but not nevertheless, I mean, we all pretty much knew, Pat, like, barring some kind of astronomically strange circumstance, we all knew Patty Jenkins was going to come back, and I'm super psyched to hear that she is. And, I mean, they say this is going to be the highest payout for a female director ever. Hell yeah. Yeah, you, absolutely. Especially in the <laughs> landscape of DCEU movies thus far, you deserve all that and more. <laughs> and now, you know, I just I hope we can see even more female directors getting these opportunities. And, you know, for characters that aren't, you know, they don't all have to be Wonder Woman or Supergirl. Like, just more 
more more female directors. Let's do it. More more. There's no reason why we don't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, more female directors, more directors of color. Let's get everybody. It, it like, really just on. needs to be about whoever is the most qualified, and there's no reason yeah. to to be like this man is more qualified. But it's just you know, it's whoever's horrible. got the best take, man. Absolutely. And that was the thing. Like hearing hearing her talk about the character, I was like, yeah, it just seems like you had a great vision, and you and you wanted to do some honor. You wanted to honor some things that the people love. Like great. Like. I can totally see why you earned this job. So good for you. Yeah, and, and she should be paid more. Absolutely. Definitely. All right, guys. Yeah. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe to The Real Rejects. Hit that notification bell to get notified every time a review or a video is up. More new movie news. What have you. The Kylerman on Twitter and Instagram. FanTheoryChannel.com is where you can find this man and his cohorts talking theories, man. That's right. Theorizing. Speculating. That's it. Chatting. Uh, you can follow us on Patreon as well. We got some cool stuff over there. We also have t-shirts in our Spreadshirt store. And uh, be beautiful, stay healthy, hydrate, and uh, stretch sometimes. It's good for your soul. Mwah. <laughs>